the foreword which we are reading is by Carl Jung, which is a very famous psychologist, psychoanalyst. He popularized the idea of the collective unconscious, that is, Jung. So he has very graciously provided a foreword to this book. The Eastern nations are threatened by a quick disintegration. Sorry, disintegration. <laughs> Disintegration of their spiritual goods and what comes into their place cannot always be considered to belong to the best of the Western mind. Therefore, one may look upon the sages like Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Ramana as modern prophets. They not only remind us of the thousands of years old spiritual culture of India, but also directly embody it. Their life and teachings form an impressive warning not to forget the demand of the soul in all the new things of Western civilization and their materialistic, technical, and commercial concerns of the world. The breathless impulse to obtain and possess in the political, social, and intellectual fields which is rummaging the apparent unappeasable passion in the soul of the Westerner, is also spreading continuously in the East, and threatens to bear consequences not yet to be overlooked. Not only in India, but also in China, much has already been lost in which once the life of the soul lived and flourished. The externalization culture of the West can truly clear away many evils, the destruction of which seems to be very desirable and advantageous. But as experience has shown, this progress is brought, sorry, bought too dearly with a loss of spiritual culture. It is undoubtedly more comfortable to dwell in a well-ordered and hygienically furnished house, but that does not answer the question as to who the dweller in this house is, and whether their soul enjoys a similar state of order and purity, that is, like that of the house serving for external life. Once humanity is set to the pursuit of external things, they are never satisfied, as experience shows, with the mere necessities of life, but always strives after more and more, which, true to their prejudices, they always seek in external things. They forget entirely that, in spite of all external success, inwardly they remain always the same, and therefore complains of their poverty when they own only one motor car instead of two like others around them. Certainly, the external life of us can bear many improvements and beautifications, but they lose their many significances to the extent to which the inner man or woman cannot keep up with them. The provision with all quote-unquote necessities is, without a doubt, a source of happiness which is not to be underestimated. But above and beyond it, the inner person raises their calm, which cannot be satisfied by any external goods. And the less this voice is heard in the hunt for the wonderful things of this world, the more the inner person becomes a source of inexplicable bad luck and understanding, sorry, and understandable unhappiness in the midst of conditions of life from which one would expect something quite different. 
you can always rely on Jung for having sentences which seem to go on forever. <laughs> the externalization leads to an incurable suffering because nobody can understand how one could suffer because of one's own nature. Nobody is surprised at their own insatiability but looks upon it as their birthright. They do not realize that the one-sidedness of the diet of their soul ultimately leads to the most serious disturbances of balance. It is this which forms the illness of the Westerner, and they do not rest till they have infected the whole world with their greedy restlessness. The wisdom and mysticism of the East have, therefore, a very great deal to tell us provided they speak in their own imitatable speech. They should remind us of what we possess in our own culture of similar things and have already forgotten, and direct our attention to that which we put aside as unimportant, namely the destiny of our inner person. The life and teachings of Sri Ramana Maharishi are important not only for the Indian but also the Westerner. Not only do they form a record of great human interest, but also a warning message to humanity, which threatens to lose itself in the chaos of its unconsciousness and lack of self-control. By Carl Jung this foreword by Carl Jung was originally published as the foreword to Heinrich Zimmer's Der Weg zum Selbst and was translated by R.F.C. Hull in volume 11 of the collected works of Carl Jung, used by permission of the Princeton University Press, publishers of the Bullington series. Okay, <laughs> just a formal note. Yeah. <laughs> well. As you can see, a wonderful Western mind such as Carl Jung speaks very highly of the teachings of Ramana Maharishi. And of course, it is the Western trademark to twist it into something we should be afraid of <laughs> if we don't listen. <laughs> But that's just a sign of respect in our culture. <laughs> now, there's lots of good wisdom here in this book, which we will practically start tomorrow. But there's also a short biographical sketch of who Ramana Maharishi is, uh, which is just two pages. And then we'll get on with who am I? Nan yar. Tomorrow. So I thank you all for attending our Sangha, our association. <laughs> I am very grateful for all of you, and I appreciate that you listen whilst I read that short section. And allow me to uh, minimize the book cover and extend my gratitude to those who sent a gift whilst I read. <laughs> <laughs>